Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time for another mini PC review. This time it is the Melee Overclock 4C F5V. This is an Intel N150 based device. And although it's not really overclocked despite the name, it does have more robust cooling than some of the other N150 devices I've looked at recently. This company is known for their fanless mini PCs, but this one has a fan with a pretty sizable heat sink on it. So it does keep itself cool and runs a little more consistently than some of the other ones we have looked at here recently. Now, before we jump into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Melee sent this to the channel free of charge. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this little mini PC is all about. Now, the price point on this starts at around $200 with the N150 processor. This comes in a lot of different configurations, both with storage and RAM options, but also processor options. So you can get this with an Intel N100, for example. You can also find these with more powerful Intel processors as well. So they've got a couple of different ways that you can get this thing decked out. Now, the one they sent me has that Intel N150 processor built in. This one has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. It's pretty easy to work on. You just open up the bottom panel here and everything is accessible to you. So you can see we've got the RAM slot there. It is DDR4 RAM. The RAM is upgradable to 32 gigabytes if you swap out the module. And then you've got the NVMe slot for your storage there in the middle. And you can also see that pretty beefy copper heat sink on the side. And that's what keeps everything cool here. Despite the fact that it's got a very small fan, I was impressed that the noise on this is not that loud when that fan is running even at full blast. So it is a very quiet fan, but certainly this will make a little more noise than what a fanless PC might make. But generally, you don't hear the fan at all. And even when it's on, when you're playing a game or something, it is very, very low volume. Now, as far as connectivity is concerned, this one I'm a little disappointed in. It does have a lot of ports, though. You've got two USB 3 ports here on the side, along with a USB 2.0 port. On the back, we've got a full-service USB-C port. This will support video output. 4K, of course, along with power in and USB-C data devices. So you can hook a docking station up to this. This is not USB 4. It is also not Thunderbolt, but you can get a good amount of connectivity through that port, which is good. Here you've got a headphone microphone jack. You've got an SD card slot here, two 4K HDMI outputs. We'll run this at 4K 60 in a little bit when we plug it in. And then you've got a power input here, so you can keep this port free and run the included power supply through here. As far as its power consumption is concerned, I found that it's about 13 watts or so at idle. Maxed out, it was doing about 30 to 32 watts, so not that power consuming, especially given what these N150 chips are capable of. Where I'm disappointed, though, is in the network connectivity. Most of these N150s we look at these days have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. This one just has gigabit Ethernet. The built-in Wi-Fi is also AC Wi-Fi, not Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 7. So it's a little behind on its networking capacity, but still it's a very nice form factor here. The casing is mostly plastic. The bottom here is metal. Uh, there are, of course, metal heat sinks and copper inside for cooling. So it doesn't feel as solid as some of their fanless offerings do, but it's decent enough. It also has a Visa mount in the box, so you can put this on the back of a display. So pretty decent hardware here, but why don't we plug it in now and see how it performs. All right, so the system here is booted up and we're on the Windows 11 desktop. It does come with Windows 11 Pro. It is fully activated. It is a clean install, so there wasn't any extra stuff on there. I also run my usual malware and virus checks and everything came out clean on this one. And as you can see here, the browsing experience is pretty good. These N150 chips, although they're not terribly high performing versus a more expensive desktop, are quad core. So they can do a good amount of multitasking. They're very power efficient. And from a general desktop computing standpoint, things on these chips feel pretty good, even at a 4K 60 resolution, which is what we are operating at right now. And these Intel chips are also very good for video playback and encoding. So here we're running a 4K 60 video from my YouTube channel. It did have a couple of drop frames when it got started, but after that it was smooth sailing and no other drop frames followed. 
So all in a very good video consumption experience. These systems are also very good as media servers too. On the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 13.1. It was slightly higher than what we saw on some other N150 machines we've looked at recently, but definitely within the margin of error. So everything here seems to be performing as expected for one of these lower cost N150 chips. And as far as general computing is concerned, it is very capable with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Everything just seems to load up here just fine and performs just fine, even at a 4K resolution. So if you've got documents to edit or spreadsheets to work on, I think all will be good with this low cost PC. Now, I don't recommend something like this for video editing. You'll probably want a more powerful PC for that. It will run video editing software. You could probably string clips together, but it's going to be a very slow experience. So I would look at a more high end device for that type of activity, but for general computing, this works pretty well. So let's move on now to gaming. I did load up Grand Theft Auto 5 a little bit earlier. This is running at 720p at the lowest settings. And I was getting a very consistent 30 frames per second out of it, sometimes going up as high as 45. So for some older games, this is going to be a fun gaming experience that might surprise you. I also ran some emulators on it. This is a PS2 emulator and I was able to get mostly the full 60 frames per second out of Burnout Revenge here. It had a couple of moments where it would slow down a little bit like you see right there, but generally it was able to run PS2 games pretty much at full speed most of the time. And of course, older systems will do uh, just fine on this hardware. So altogether, a pretty decent uh, little device here if you keep your gaming expectations in check. And I also found that game streaming on the box is pretty good, even at 4K60. This is No Man's Sky streaming in 4K60 from GeForce Now, which is NVIDIA's cloud gaming service. It ran flawlessly. Latency was very reasonable on it, and it looked and played great without issue. And this comes in at a very high bit rate, so if you are streaming at this level, you'll definitely want to use its Ethernet connector but even at gigabit, it was more than enough to support that stream. And on the 3D Mark Times by Benchmark test, we got a score of 478. This is right in line with what we saw on two other N150 based mini PCs that I looked at recently. You can also see how this compares to something like the Steam Deck. So even though this performs well, it's not gonna be up to the level of running modern AAA titles. But one thing I wanna note here is that despite this claiming to be overclocked, the performance isn't much better than a standard N150. This really comes down to the cooling that this machine offers versus some of the other N150 based machines that we've seen out there. So this is gonna run better consistently under heavy load than a cheaper machine might. And my testing confirms that because we ran the 3D Mark stress test and there I got a score of 99.6%, which indicates that we won't see much thermal throttling with this one. You can also see the temperature levels that this machine was running at when that test concluded, 47 degrees Celsius or 116 degrees Fahrenheit. And this was significantly lower than the GM K-Tech N150 based machine we looked at a few months ago. That one costs a little bit less, but there is a performance drop off when you place that system under heavy load this one cools itself off much better. Now, one thing that I love doing with these little Intel chips is running Linux. And I do run a lot of Docker containers and all sorts of fun applications on a bunch of N150 chips that I've deployed all over the place. This one works well, just like many of the others do. The only issue I ran into from a compatibility standpoint was that Ubuntu here, the most recent version, did not detect the Wi-Fi. They have an Intel AC9560 chipset on board. And for whatever reason, this version of Ubuntu didn't see it. So you may have to hunt around for drivers or do some other work to get the Wi-Fi working. But the ethernet was fine. Everything worked as expected. The performance was great. And of course, this can make a really good server, whether it's a media server, some Docker application serving, or both these things are very capable little machines. So all in, a, a nice little N150 implementation here. If you're somebody that puts your little server under heavy load for long periods of time, I think you'll like this one a lot just because I didn't see any thermal issues with it due to the beefed up cooling on it. And unfortunately, that is what they mean by overclocking. It doesn't seem like there's any better performance here, but because it's got better cooling, it will be able to sustain performance over time better than some of the lower cost ones that are out there. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.